Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmerced.com with Foreign Policy 101. Now the purpose of this video is just to kind of talk about the scope of foreign policy and the different ways people look at it and just to help you have a better conversation about sort of foreign policy. And the basic in a nutshell idea of foreign policy is basically how do we deal with foreign nations, which comes across many different lines trade policy so what kind of things can other countries sell to us what can we sell to them well, are there any taxes and tra tariffs on them are there any quotas trade policy um you know diplomacy so what kind of relationship do we have with other countries do our leaders of the both countries get along do they get to know each other are they interacting with each other so that we can make room on these other uh other areas foreign aid. Now, foreign aid, basically, we give money to other countries for a variety of different reasons. We'll come back to that. Um, and then there's sort of uh, basically all sorts of other uh, ways that we get involved, whether it's policy on travel, so like, you know, working on making it easier for people to travel between both nations, whether as a tourist or to through emigration, immigration. Um, all these things are affected through our relationships with other countries, the the, the friendliness, the hostility, uh, etc. <clears throat> the thing is that there's many moving parts when it comes to foreign policy. It's very complicated. It's not simple. It's not something you can just paint with a broad brush. So, I mean, generally the first step you have to think about is sort of what are you looking to accomplish uh, through foreign policy? Like, what is it that you... How do you see the world... Um, and how do you want to see the world? So there's different perspectives on sort of what people want to accomplish through foreign policy. Um, I would say, you know, a libertarian generally wants to sort of see a, a liberal order spread, in a sense. So basically that, um, you know, more places around the world are more liberal in the sense that governments are more hands-off, play smaller roles, tax less, regulate less. People are more free to exchange with each other, free to travel. And they will, to the extent that they, this foreign policy can, can lead to this world, that's sort of what they want. <clears throat> There's different ways that could theoretically happen. So that, that's one perspective on foreign policy, that it's to make the maneuvers to create a more widespread liberal order. Then there's sort of the egalitarian order, where basically, in this one, I don't think many people explicitly believe this, more than this is just kind of where they end up because of other things that they believe, where people want there to be a more egalitarian economic outcomes for people around the world. The problem is, when a country implements some sort of egalitarian policy and say, hey, we're going to make everything really equal, okay, uh, this, this results in a tax and regulatory scheme that tends to push people to other places. So then factories, businesses, people move to countries where they're taxed less, where they're controlled less, they, they run away from the control. So the natural conclusion that someone who wants that kind of comes to <clears throat> is that these controls will only work if we can impose them on everyone everywhere so there's no one for people to escape to. So there's some people who really just try to find reasons to push things like minimum wages and other types of egalitarian policies and try to push them wherever they don't already exist because as long as it's somewhere that doesn't exist, there's sort of a place where people can escape from the policy, which makes it harder to work wherever they're at. So that's, and again, I don't think anyone explicitly thinks of it in, that, in those particular terms, but I think there are people who believe in those policies that in practice, that's what ends up happening. Then the third policy is sort of the hegemonic view, where basically, where basically you believe that your country should be dominant across the world, and basically that the only that the the only the only place you care about is your country, economically, security wise, uh, power wise. So in that case, the aim of foreign policy should be to solidify the power of your country in the global sphere. Okay, these are the people who gen gen generally and genuinely scare me, um, because. If that's sort of your goal, then generally the lives, the motivations of people outside of your country become matter very uh, little to you relative to accomplishing that particular goal. Okay, so again, those are sort of the three main perspectives I would say that most people, when they're thinking about foreign policy, are, are kind of thinking in their head. Either more liberalism, more f sort of freedom around the world, two, uh, more egalitarian economic order or three a, some sort of hegemonic power center being in the nation that you're in now how can you achieve that so there's different ways there's 
interventionist for policy, where basically the policy is very heavy-handed and gets very involved. Um, and then there's non-interventionist policy, and then there's isolationism, okay? And it depends what you're trying to achieve, okay? So basically an interventionist believes that, you know, there should be sort of very proactive foreign policy, that the government should be going out there to achieve its goal, which could be one of those three goals that I mentioned before. Okay, so someone, will, so that's why you do meet some libertarian-ish figures who might actually be for more aggressive foreign policy because they think, hey, if there's a pol- there's a country out there that's being oppressive, government just needs to go in there and and basically take out oppressive regimes. That's to, that they need to intervene and make those regimes hard to uh, those li- the di- the lives difficult. Which I personally disagree with, but that's you know it's not necessarily a there there is. There, there is some consistent thought processes going through that uh, line of logic. Um, but also other people might be wanting intervening to force economic policies on other countries um, or to, you know, weaken other countries so that way their country is more powerful. Okay, um, so, but, but basically intervention, people want to intervene, which could be done in lots of different ways. So it could be done by militarily intervening so by putting your troops in their country setting up bases in another country so that way you're able to better get information uh rel- information uh and be ready to deploy that kind of thing you know just be more present be more involved be able to apply more pressure foreign aid is another lever a lot of times people think foreign aid is really mostly humanitarian and that's generally the way a lot of human aid is sold but most of it's more about influence about making sure you have influence with certain countries um, and having a lever to to exercise that influence, okay? So basically, being, basically, you can be like, hey, we have this aid we give you, but if you don't do what we want, we'll take away the aid. So whether the country needs it or not is necessarily irrelevant. It's the power that the foreign aid gives the country, um, whatnot. And also, there's oftentimes that is also used to do sort of economic stimulus, where basically we give foreign aid, but the foreign aid is mainly an excuse to be used to buy goods from the country giving the aid, Um oftentimes arms so foreign aid can be very complicated beyond than just the idea of oh hey we're, we're doing we're being nice to other countries okay then you can also intervene by tariffs okay so you want to achieve any of these things with other countries you could use trade policy to put pressure uh you know curry favor etc with other nations these are all vectors of foreign policy so, but an, so an interventionist has no qualms with using all these levers to achieve their goals. A non-interventionist, generally, which I think more libertarians nowadays more so lean towards non-interventionism more than, than, than ever, um, generally the idea is, you know what, you can't force other countries to be better. And oftentimes a lot of the issues in other countries need to be solved among the people. There needs to be sort of a cultural conversation in those countries, etc. What we can do is be an example of of what other nations can be. So the focus should be internal and being sort of, you know, being the freest place we can be, having the best economy we can have through through freedom, etc., and let other countries trade with us freely, you know, basically have no trade policy, just let people, if you want to sell stuff to here, you can, and if we want to buy stuff from you, we can. Um, you know, not necessarily getting involved in, in power dynamics through things like foreign aid and, and military, just basically trying to be the best neighbor possible, being, you know, by basically having the your life in order and hoping that that inspires other nations to want to be like you because other people want to have the quality of life, the quality of world around them that you create by embracing freedom. So you're not necessarily not interacting with other countries. You still want to trade with other countries. You still want to... You still want to get along with other countries. You still want to travel with other countries. So it's about embracing world, but it's about basically creating change through example than through sort of proactive exercises of control and power, um, which is generally a very libertarian perspective, that the idea that a lot of change is created through sort of more um, by setting an example, by positive role modelship than necessarily through, through power and force and punishment. And then the third approach is isolationism. This is where you do try to isolate yourself from the rest of the world. You use trade to make it impossible to buy goods from other countries. You make it hard for people to immigrate to your country or leave your country. Um, This is oftentimes a very, very destructive policy because it's oftentimes people's freedom to do things that holds governments accountable, that holds, um, that provides 
that allows people to be exposed to new ideas, that creates, that expands the world. So, um, you know, real deal isolationism in the sense of, you know, more trade, less immigration, um, less diplomacy with the rest of the world is, is real deal uh, scary. And oftentimes people who just want to project power, they, they, they basically, they'll, they'll, they'll promote this because they're hoping that it'll somehow preserve their power and 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 prevent power but i mean if you remember the example of like the wall of china where china built this wall to block itself from the rest of the world you know during the during it contributed to well falling behind so um yeah so again you just different ways of there's different orders of foreign policy again you can be trying to create that liberal order that egalitarian order that um hegemonic power or, you know, and that can be done through interventionist foreign policy where you actively use all these policy levers or through non-interventionist policy where you try to focus on, dom- on a strong domestic front and use that as an example for the rest of the world that you try to get along with. Or through isolationism where you really truly try to block yourself from the rest of the world and no longer participate or associate with the rest of the world. Um, but at the end of the day, these are people's lives. So whether it's whatever country people are from, it's people's lives are affected by every decision, every policy or lack of a policy decision has an effect on someone's life in some way. And at the end of the day, we're all just trying to make the world a better place. And hopefully, you know, this will help you have a better discussion over uh, these these policy vectors so that we can more robustly um, enjoy them and understand them. And. Whatnot. There's so much more to foreign policy than just what I discussed here, but this should give you a good primer on what it is.